The BYD SEAL 06 has just leaked with a stronger motor, bigger body, uh, and a design change that tells us exactly where BYD is heading next. And honestly, it's, uh, you know, it's brilliant. Most of the EV world has not really realised what this car actually is, and it's a BYD which is very, very similar to the BYD SEAL, but different. So think of it as the Toyota Camry to the Toyota Corolla at uh, Celica, for example. So it's brilliant, and uh, a lot of people don't know what it is. You will by the end of this video. A new leak from Car News China shows the updated BYD SEAL 06 EV, and it's a much more interesting upgrade than I first expected. It's a very deliberate move that fits very, very neatly into a bigger pattern with BYD. And I want to break it all down so this car can actually make sense to everybody who's watching, because it's a more strategic uh, vehicle than it looks on the surface. It's definitely not just a facelift model with a new front bumper. You know, it's uh, it's definitely different. So today I want to show you what has changed, why BYD is refreshing this specific model now, and how this sedan quietly fits into BYD's broader global expansion plan for 2026 next year. When you zoom out a little bit, at least not too much, it becomes very, very obvious that uh, this is BYD laying the foundation for the next stage of its global lineup. This will fascinate you, honestly. Hello folks, my name is Ben Alexander. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate your time. And also thank you very much, uh, as always, to the Patreon supporters and the channel members on YouTube. It genuinely makes a difference, so thank you so much. I appreciate that. You're always very welcome to send me an email or ask things in the comments. Let's just jump into it. The biggest thing that stands out immediately is the motor. Well, other than the front bumper, that is the motor. So the leaked SEAL 06 appears to get an upgraded motor up to 200 kilowatts, which is around 80 kilowatts more than the current version. So the new one is 270 horsepower, which is just pretty good. And that definitely puts it beyond the like, budget commuter category. But what is more interesting is, that, uh, is, is why BYD would do this. BYD is clearly trying to position the SEAL 06 as a proper mid-tier sedan, something that sits very, very comfortably above the Dolphin, and uh, yeah, but still very much below the BYD SEAL. So think of it like a modern Corolla or a Civic replacement, the saloons I'm talking about, but with more power, far lower running costs, and it's uh, intended to be the less flashy version than the SEAL, but still looks very, very comparable to a SEAL. So again, Camry Celica. It's a very, very similar thing. When BYD gives a sedan like this, 200 kilowatts or 270 horsepower, it's about creating the perfect car, I think, with enough performance to satisfy people who uh, don't want a boring eco box. They, you know, but they do want an efficient vehicle, something inefficient enough to keep long-term ownership costs pretty low, and that is exactly the type of car that I think works pretty much everywhere. So Australia, Europe, UK, Brazil, uh, Southeast Asia, and it's the kind of car that fits very, very neatly into BYD's global push. Now, the second part of this leak is the expanded body. So the SEAL 06 EV looks slightly larger, a little bit longer, a little bit wider, and a little bit more presence on the road. And that is not an accident. And uh, when an automaker increases the size of a car like this, usually it means they want to uh, fit in larger battery packs, for example, improve ride and passenger uh, space, basically for people in the car, and also increase the stability and the comfort. For example, longer wheelbase would make it do this less on a motorway, would feel a little bit more planted. And uh, yeah, when you look at it from that lens, it makes perfect sense. A slightly bigger SEAL 06 with a 48 uh, kilowatt hour battery or 60 kilowatt hour battery blade option and uh, 430 to 500 kilometers of, of real world range if you get the very, very large battery one and a 200 kilowatt motor is, you know, suddenly it's a very realistic alternative to uh, if you're looking for a Corolla so a saloon, I'm talking about, like a big one uh, or the Civic or a Hyundai Elantra or maybe a, I don't know, Mazda 3 or something like that. Maybe even the MG5 EV, maybe? I'm sure there are a couple of others. So this segment is actually where legacy automakers are extremely vulnerable. Uh, they're, I think the expression again would be their pants are down here. This is a bit of an issue. So the Corolla and Civic are very, very good. They're brilliant cars, but they are kind of trapped. So they can't compete with the running costs of an EV and their hybrid systems are starting to feel a bit dated. So there's a whole spectrum of people 
who like hybrids and those who do not. And uh, I don't particularly mind them because people want to go electric or hybrid. They get a hybrid, they almost, I think it's like 96% go to electric after a hybrid, if not another hybrid. So we shouldn't really have too much of a gripe about hybrids because basically people always go further into, into electrification and just get an electric car afterwards. And uh, yeah, and, and when you zoom out, it's, it's even clearer really. If you look at what BYD has done in this last 12 months, a major refresh. This is going to get really fascinating. So um, I think you might have a bit of a, a wow moment actually, because it's pretty, it's pretty clear what they're doing. So they've done a major refresh on their Kin Plus hybrid. The Dolphin Surf arrived for younger buyers or people that don't drive very far. The Seagull uh, free edition, dropping EV prices even further. That was the cheapest version of the Seagull in China. The massive rollout of factories in Thailand, Brazil, Hungary, Turkey. And uh, yeah, the launch of the Blade Battery 2 or 2.0. So it's the 210 uh, watt hour per kilogram version of their battery. Uh, so now the Seal 06 EV gets a stronger motor, larger body. And uh, yeah, this is part of the, the same global puzzle. So they're behaving like Toyota did in uh, in the 2000s. So they're releasing a full, logical, orchestrated, and very well organized lineup of cars for different buyers, different budgets, different countries, uh, with different looks and aesthetics to them. So the only difference is these ones are electric and they're cheap to run. They're from China, not Japan. Close, but not, you know, not the same. And uh, updated every single year, pretty much, instead of every few years or seven years or something like that. And it's funny because when you line them up, it's almost a perfect mirror. So the Seagull is kind of like the Yaris. The Dolphin is kind of like the Corolla hatchback. Uh, the Seal 06 is like a Corolla sedan or Civic sedan. Um, yeah, the Song Plus is kind of like the RAV4. The Seal is like the Camry. The Shark is like the Hilux. So it's almost comical, really, how neatly they overlap and how much that fits. And the Seal 06 is a key part of that. And it fills a sedan gap that basically most automakers have either ignored, uh, completely abandoned, especially in regions where SUVs have basically just taken over, like Australia, the UK, not so much in Europe, actually. And I can already imagine the pricing if this car goes global. If BYD keeps their current strategy, then we're probably going to see this land somewhere around £22,000 to £26,000 in the UK, maybe, or thirty five dollars to $42,000 in Australia is my guess, or maybe twenty-four dollars to €28,000 Euros in Europe, and or one hundred twenty dollars to one hundred forty thousand dollars in Brazil. So if that's even close to accurate, this becomes one of the best value sedans available, uh, you know, petrol or electric, it doesn't really matter. It's just one of the best value vehicles I think you can get if you're looking for a sedan. And that is why this leak matters more than I think people will give it credit for. This isn't just a stronger motor or a slightly bigger body. It's a quiet evolution of BYD's entire sedan strategy, a strategy that looks more and more like a global blueprint designed to replace traditional petrol sedan, uh, the, the traditional petrol sedan category entirely. So the question really is, I think, then, does a car like this appeal to you? Does it appeal to me? I actually think it does. Or are SUVs still the better option? Or, you know, for, for most people, personally, I think a 200 kilowatt sedan with 450 kilometers of real world range for under 40,000 Aussie dollars, for example, or 42 grand, maybe on roads, is exactly the kind of car that will start, you know, converting petrol drivers who've never really considered an EV. Let me know your thoughts on this down below. Would this be enough uh, for you to switch from something like a Corolla or a, I don't know, whatever other hybrids you've got or a Civic? Uh, or do you think sedans are kind of still a dying breed because basically people want the extra height of a, a saloon car? Thank you for watching. Really, really appreciate your time. Hope you've had a great weekend. And uh, yeah, thank you so much.